one month ago I showed you how can you analyze your logs and display your fields from logs as key value pairs but in order to analyze these logs effectively you would like to output your logs as a JSON object and use structured logging because it's more machine friendly and in this video I will show you how you can emit logs from your Go project in the following format but first let's see the official documentation at readme in the projects directory on github and in performance section we can see that zap logger is much faster than other packages for logging except of zero log and the reason why zap logger is so fast is that zap logger takes a different approach than other structured logging packages this approach includes reflection free and zero allocation json encoder and the base logger strives to avoid serialization overhead and allocation whenever possible. Before getting started writing our own code, let's look at the official documentation. First of all, we have to decide which logger we will use. We can use sugared logger or just a logger. Sugared logger should be used when performance is not critical in your project. Sugared logger will still be more performant than default log package and in case where every microsecond and every allocation in your program matter you should use logger logger is even faster than sugared logger and it allocates far less but you will have to write your fields like that every time specifying the type of the value that you want to display in your logs but the good news is that you can simply convert from logger to sugared logger and from sugared logger to logger to start writing our code i created a new folder and main.go file in it now let's initialize a new module go mod init quick explain zap logger now we should run the following command to install uber zap logger in our code then we can import this package and create function main that will log some information to our standard output let's save and run go run main.go this was new production let's write new example and new development and now you can see differences between development example and production production and example logs emit your logs in json format when development outputs only fields in json format also you can see that timestamp is much user friendly in development logger so in production when you want to analyze your logs you use new production if you want to avoid printing timestamp and color you should use new example in development you can use new development now let's switch back to new example and using logger not sugared logger we will add some fields so for example zap string name and zap int 64 user id we can see that we successfully displayed our name and user id as i said before we can easily switch from logger to sugared logger and this method will give us the following output so as you can see there is no difference between logger and sugared logger when we output in regular fields i personally prefer using regular logger because sugared logger can lead me to using key without a value and then i will receive the following error message in my logs in regular logger i won't have such a problem because you separate your key value pairs and if you want to use more complex data types you can write zap any and then specify the value of any type and if i want to specify an error i simply write zap.error and then without key i write errors.new and some error message and as you can see zap logger will automatically add error key to my value in the same way you can specify error without key and it will automatically place error key in your sugared logger as you can see when we use sugar.warnw 
we receive stack trace from Go after a warning message. With info level, we don't get this stack trace. And development logger is useful in development, so you can see the time in human friendly format. You see the type of log message, the place in the code of this logger message and message is not goes into the JSON. But in production you want to use new production. When using new production you will get in your log output only messages that have logging level of info or higher. So if we write sugar.debug we will not get this debug message. But if we use new development the debug message is shown. You can read more about fields in the official documentation under, under the type field. As you may have noticed, we can provide options to our new production function. So, for example, we can add zap with color to set to false, zap add stack trace to show stack trace, for example, on debug level or on info level or maybe on error level and also we can specify several fields that will be shown in each log message but first let's without saving run the program and then let's return our options and run this program again as you can see we removed color we added app.test and also we now showing stack trace. So this is how you can configure your logger. I also found an example of how you can customize your zap logger even more. For that you can use zap core package. In this example you firstly create a new config for the zap encoder, then you set the type time to be in standard ISO format. Then you specify a new JSON encoder with configs. Then we open log.json file where our logs will be stored. So we will not print to standard output, but instead in log.json file. Then we create a new writer that will be used by Zap to write messages with our logs to this file. We specify default login level and it will be debug level. Then we creating a new core and using logger zap.new we specify our own logger with all these configurations. Also we adding some options here. So let's see how it works. I already pasted this snippet in my code. After running go run main go we can open json file and as you can see we have our time in ISO format, we have our message and also we added the color. I inserted two log messages so you can see that error, log.error also includes stack trace and we can see that debug messages are also included to our log.json file. I forgot to mention that I added these commas and square brackets and in the real life you will get result that looks like this. And this is how we can easily create fully customizable loggers with Zap and Zap Core. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this video helpful. And in this case, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next videos.